Namaste, my dear friends. I am going to give a very, very important video on a very famous holy book known as Atma Vidya Vilasam by a great sage Swami Sadasiva Brahmendra. He was an Avadhuta. He has written the gist of Advaita Vedanta in his 43 stanzas. It is the whole theory of Advaita Vedanta is explained in nutshell very briefly but the whole gist of Advaita Vedanta is explained through these very small bunch of stanzas. Atma Vidya Vilasam is a brief composition of 43 slokas by Sri Sadasiva Brahmendra. Sri Sadasiva Brahmendra is a Brahmagyani who was walking on the fields and towns without any dress. He was a Digambra. This book of 43 slokas is about the state of a self-realized person. He has also written another composition with the same title Atma Vidya Vilasam. This book is about the 43 verse composition. Introduction. Atma is the subtlest thing in the universe for the seekers during their seeking stays. The Vedas describe that like this. The cow has a tail with tuft of hair on it. Pluck one hair from the tuft, make hundred parts of it, take that one hundredth part of the hair and make one thousand parts, take one thousandth part of it and make again one thousand parts. That one ultimate part is the Atma. This imagery is to derive home the subtlety of Atma. During stage of meditation, looking for a form for Atma. Atma is all pervading, pure consciousness and infinite bliss. It is cognized only through techniques of negation as not this, not this. Atma is Ananda Savrupa. So we start the Translation from verse number 1. I salute Sri Dakshnamurti who sits under a banyan tree and with a chin mudra sign denoting the union of Jiva and Brahma and <coughs> teaches the Brahmagyana through infinite silence. He dispels the ignorance of the seekers and reveals Dharma in his own form. Verse number 2 
I meditate in my mind Sadguru Sivendra who annihilates the illusion brought about by the buddhistic cults by his Advaita Tejas light. He is the boat to cross the ocean of sansara worldly life with all its miseries. Verse number 3 I salute Sivendra Guru who possesses the same name of Sadashiva. It is through his tremendous power and message flowing from his lips. I understood my identity with the all-pervading Brahma. With that Brahma within me, I am having infinite peace which has not been brought by reading various scriptures. Verse 4 The Brahma is the causeless cause for the purpose of creation, the Maya, which is the indivisible part of Brahma, breathed and then came the five elements of space, air, water, fire and earth, like a potter brings about pots through his wheel. Verse number 4 The Atma, whichever effulgent with no one accepting himself, has no form. He is without sound and voice. He is untouched. Aspra, as Godpada said, he is without tendencies, Vasanas. He is ancient but ever young and he is immortal. He cannot be visualized through your eyes for he is experiential. He has no moment. He is neither provable or disprovable. He is the present, the past and the future. For the seekers to cognize, he is said to be within one's heart cave. For the advanced souls, he is in the space. He is also said to be in all the worlds of the universe. Verse number 5 Atma is encompassed by the illusion, Maya, even though he is unrelated to anything, he is bound by ignorance, even though he is all knowledge. Only through his mercy and grace one can perceive him. Brahma lies like a dagger in the sheath. Unless you investigate this sheath, that is Maya and ignorance, you can never measure with him. People calling him with various names have not understood him. He is like a seed underneath the earth. Earth has no knowledge of it unless you water the earth. That is, with your humble investigation, the seed does not sprout. Verse number 6 The jiva is masked by illusion, that is, maya. Bound by Maya's spell, he is waking, dreaming, sleeping, suffers from poverty, amasses wealth and suffers the horrors of wealth. 
he takes rebirth and once again suffers all false perceptions appear when he recognizes that this bondage is of his own making the awakening does not come about by reading scriptures but only by initiation given to the disciple by the learned and realized guru verse number 7 the jiva by virtue of great benevolence bestowed on him by his guru the perceptor and by his singular attention achieves intellectual excellence and become great with that excellence he sets his illusion that is body consciousness by practice he distinguishes his real identity and its relationship with his body he becomes the satchit ananda he is free from sorrows and momentary happiness his mind is ever balanced tranquil and shuddha pure he becomes ever cheerful he becomes the peace verse number 8 when the grace of guru descends on the disciple that jiva ever emerges in the ocean of bliss when his mind has annihilated the universe also is annihilated for him having got rid of the blindness of illusion he is able to see and he becomes the seer such a awakened person becomes a brahma gyani verse number 9 due to the intensity of the perceptor's benevolence and in his flow of grace one will get tranquility and perfect peace and enjoys immense bliss all the troubles have vanished in this world for him atma means hridayam hridayo plus i am so atma resides in his heart whether he is in waking dreaming or sleeping state verse number 10 the great among the ascetics with his gross grace like the cosmic sun looks at the entire universe so vivisected why vivisected as the very image of brahma and conducts his usual worldly duties and crossed in samadhi verse 11 all the five elements are said to have originated one from another but one is not above the other in their cause only the power of brahma has created all these they are also not different from brahma because brahma and his power are one and the same contemplating at all times in his way the yogi enjoys in sesent nirvikalpa samadhi it is from the desire of brahma that all these creations have originated but again his desires are not different from him verse number 12 the whole universe appears like a dream whatever be its composition nothing stands in the realization of the self he the gyani moves about freely in all his acts with this understanding undeterred he has no fixed dislikes and likes and he harbors no ambitions he never considers any other jiva as his enemy he is above pride and pleasure 
and he never enjoys any fleeting joys. He is unconcerned amidst wealth and comfort. He lives as renouncer amidst all material enjoyments and acquisitions. He dwells no feelings amidst all difficulties and adversities. He is ever peaceful in the midst of foes. Even in insults he is unaffected and he has only forgiveness even for those who have insulted him. Verse number 13 this illusion followed by the consequences of grief or pleasure has nothing to do with the jnani and they are totally absent in him. After realization, the jnani is internally happy and enjoys the bliss both within and outside. He con he conceives no unhappy state and he exerts no revengeful action on anyone. Verse number 14 The says behaves like an innocent child unaffected by egoism and the belief of individual self. Whether honored or insulted, rebuked, angered, he sees no distinction. Having emerged in the divine nectar of Nirati Shyananda, he is totally unconcerned about any matter. Due to Vasanas, the actions may come about for a while, but he transcends them. Verse 15 The says abandons all duties, even begging arms in the midst of people he averts. He moves about in deserted places, taking only food that is made available to him. All thoughts have disappeared since he has annihilated the mind. If anyone disturbs him, he leaves that place. Even the whole earth looks like an open yard of his own house, and the ocean looks like a rivulet. Verse number 16 Having tasted the eternal bliss, he will not move from his place for anything else. Without mind, thought, intellect, and ego, he becomes an introvert and prefers to be silent always. Verse number 16 You are asking how to cross the ocean of sansara. What is there to do? Accepting decontaminating the self from the body, senses, breath and mind, totally negating mundane objects and pleasures. He may even abandon his daily duties. He remains a witness or spectator or saksi for happenings around him. The Brahma Vetta is one who is totally renounced but performs minimum daily duties. The Brahma Vidvara deserts even these duties as per scripture. The Brahma Vidvaryas is totally unaware of his surroundings. The Brahma Vidva Vidvavarishta is always in the bliss but only attending to his food and thirst when called upon to do so. Verse 18 Since the entire universe is an illusion for him, the Jeevan Mukta keeps his cool and will not be wondered even if the sun becomes cool, the moon becomes hot and the water emits fire like a sperm and an ovum before organ genesis he has no worry and anxiety ever free from fear and sorrow verse 19 the jivan mukta is ever without ego but even devas 
the celestial beings will worship for his power will shake the entire universe in that blissful state all the periods of past present and future merge in him verse number 20 enjoying all at all times absolute peace he is saya jnana ananda rupa he will not take any pride in his actions even if the insentient objects like ornaments and the lamps take pride in their actions verse number 21 further the jnani in his brahmic state and grosses in self bliss and stays indefinitely in one place in meditation freely enjoys at some times singing and dancing amusingly verse number 22 the brahmagyani who has acquired the brahma in a thoughtless state continues to remain without thoughts he is liberated with brahmagyana and this jnana is described as different from dhyana and vijnana since he has inhaled annihilated the mind he stands only as a spectator a witness a saksi for all things happening around him verse number 23 some great people even from the very beginning of their practice try to tame the mind they make a lot of introspection the mind is like a restless deer wandering here and there in the jungle he makes every effort to tame that mind with his mind but only who has tamed the mind with the mind can become a brahma jnani verse number 23 the self does not rise like the sun nor does it set it does not decrease nor decrease nor decay it is the ever present witness which can be experienced if you remove the supreme position verse number 24 the mind has to be controlled and it is like a wild tiger which has to be killed only by the arrow of knowledge when one purifies the mind with his sinless actions and penance and by el eliminating the self aggrandizement and egoism through self knowledge he merges with atma the mind can be annihilated only by pure self knowledge to merge in the self he must be devoid of fear since abhyasa or fearlessness is only brahma he will move anywhere in the universe without any variation and differentiation without fear in a thoughtless state verse number 20 5. The Jnani by spreading his rays of wisdom and by his intellect catches the imagination of the righteous people and awakens them. He is a blooming without impurities, without the consciousness of day and light. His every presence and his moments among the pious is bringing enlightenment to those people who come and see him from far and near verse number 26 advaita siddhi means living in natural state saja smadi and achieving liberation from that moment of naturalness he performs all actions in the state of Kavalya without differing from that exalted state, staying in everlasting bliss. 
he dispels the ignorance like the raising full moon and he is worshipping even by angels of the heaven verse number 27 by his presence and touch he will spread his influence and grants benevolence to the people he by self bliss makes them feel inner harmony and removes all their ills since he is a brahmagani verse number 28 when mind is engrossed in any particular issue the mind gets immense pleasure or pain even in pleasures from articles there is ananda bliss but it is short lived but a gyanis presence is like a sorbha celestial fragrance and spreads that fragrance in all his surroundings he is moving in the celestial garden of atmanand hence he is ever fragrant verse number 29 fear alone generates in one when he feels that there is someone other than himself but self knowledge is a real vijnana state where there is no one other than himself hence self knowledge is like a majestic garden in which all the peacock stroll without fear the gyani is thus fearless and in his presence no one else can also have fear he is like a blue throated shiva in whose presence the blue peacock stroll verse number 30 the gyani deserting the mistaken water in a mirage in the sunny sands enjoys no delusion that gyani drinks the real water of divine nectar which is bliss of brahma verse 31 the gyani in the beautiful garden of advaita sings to his heart content very pleasantly he is like a cuckoo enjoying the tender leaves of vedanta verse number 32 the gyani has nothing to do with the sins and righteous acts he is like a lion with knowledge and the ignorant elephants have been driven away to the wide forest by his mere presence he is alone in the forest of brahmananda enjoying the everlasting bliss verse number 32 let maya which is like a cloud shower rains called the world what is the profit for me what is the loss for me i am ever happy in the self afflicted swarupa the brahma verse number 33 when a gold is absent there are no gold ornaments when the earth is absent there are no pots and jars when there is no ocean there are no waves and foams so also in brahma gyani there are not expressive objects outside the gyani is like a like a fattened elephant deserted by all the other animals in the jungle and moves about freely and climbs the mountains at his will verse number 34 in yoga one is asked to concentrate on the tips of one's nose to arrest thoughts they are asked to show mudras hand postures to the divine will they are further asked to perform namaskaras prostrations to show reverence to gods the gyani with his silence as yoga mudra and namaskaras stay at the river band emerging in meditation and enjoys samadhi verse number 
the attachment to the worldly objects is called raga non attachment is viraga in a jnani his renunciation is raga and abandonment is viraga he has no body consciousness not clad at all or clad in minimal clothes will not speak to anyone anything fully devoid of thoughts and feelings will not do any duties excepting the minimal duties he takes any food that is available to him moves about freely and sleeps under a tree verse number 36 keeping the mind internally absorbed in brahma he remains in peace of jnana he has got unbridled feeling towards friends and foes and there is no harm to him even if he lives in deserted houses or wanders on the river banks abating long stretches of sand dunes or jungles verse number 37 the gyani enjoys lying on the soft bed of soil and enjoying the cool breeze as if fanned ever in a peaceful state radiating like a full blue moon he is shiva the purusha and siddha verse number 38 the person who has realize the truth always enjoys satchitananda the gyani who has realized that only truthful thought is brahma can go to any world locus as he pleases he is the king of the saint even though he sleeps on rocky structure and gets sound sleep he is ever surrounded by cool breeze and river water verse number 39 the gyani transcends five seeds as the gross is removed from the earth to show the inner plate he ever stays in brahma even while food falls on his hand on earth day he wanders in the streets of the town as a dead log verse number 40 the gyani looks at this entire universe as a mistaken snake for a rope and emerges himself with the rest as brahma ever without doubt or fear he is ever in the oneness of the almighty and will not stretch his hands for bagging food and eats what comes to him unmindful of and mind unmindful of when and how and from whom it comes verse number 41 the gyani is always in the turya state and is an yoga rudha one who excels in yoga brahma gyani ever lives in the state of brahma and so he does not have to remember brahma every time verse number 42 the gyani completely deserts all scriptural injunctions like one would desert a boat after crossing the river he has to desert all shastras rules of conduct because nothing is required after brahma gyana he is like a lamp steadily burning in a breezeless atmosphere verse number 43 the gyani who has achieved the siddhi the state gets the apruksha gyana direct knowledge of brahma within he will rest in brahma pada bereft of birth and death and looks at the universe as a terrifying one he behaves like a lunatic smearing mud on his body and roams about in the forest all alone he is said to be in unmani state the state in which he has found the ruby in his heart 
where from nectar is flowing he always lives in that state even if he moves about with people of the world verse number 44 the self realized gyani is a yoga siddha that is he will not perceive anything with his eyes or ears and speaks hardly any word and he is ever in brahma and there are no rituals for him he stands unaffected like a rock in a storm verse number 45 the gyani is devoid of any caste or clan and has no possessions distinction or difference he is a brahma veta Shugani. Okay, 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 okay. He is from the unknown source to which he has returned. He is devoid of time and space. He is a Kalatita, one who has transcended the three times past, present and future and the space. वर्ष नंबर 46 द ज्ञानी वेयर्स आकाशा द स्पेस एज हिज क्लोथ्स ही स्प्रेड्स द अर्थ एज हिज बेड कीप्स हिज हैंड्स एज पिलोस एम्ब्रेसेस द डैम सेल ऑफ सेंट सेंटली हुड एंड एंजॉयज द डिवाइन स्लीप ऑफ हिज ब्लिस हैप्पीली विद कंप्लीट एक्सटेसी वर्ष नंबर 47 vasnas or latent tendencies of the previous birth will haunt a normal person in the current birth the gyani ho the gyani has no such sanskaras must happenings in the present birth he enjoys with his pure intellect as a damsel in the palatial mansion of divine bliss he is in brahma like the ghee in the butter all pervading but without known by others verse number 48 the gyani cherishes the the gyani cherishes with broad way of the renunciation by lighting thousand lamps with his self affluence climbs the upstairs called the reality and enjoys the ecstasy of liberation the damsel in brahmic state verse number 49 the gyani devoid of pleasures appetite concern for his body remains completely satisfied with illumination he is sahaja sthiti immense ananda the bliss without any boundaries he is brahm ananda at all time verse number 50 the brahma gyani with his discretion either rejects or receives anything without intention as in as in unaffected by good or bad that comes in its way he never hates them whatever that has not come to him he has no regret either verse 51 the gyani in all matters behaves with balance he will not think of the past or will he think of the forthcoming in future even the present objects he will not see with any special intention he is unconcerned with past present and future come what may he looks at it without equanimity verse number 52 the gyani con- controlling all his senses and completely giving up all material wants 
and realizing that the all pervading brahma is himself lives in perfect satisfaction and moves about in this world he enjoys bhu bhumananda that is all pervasiveness of brahma and enjoys eternal bliss verse number 53 The jnani will not give up what has been obtained him either good or bad he has no hatred and endearment he is the witness in spite of his body touching smelling tasting eating hearing walking sleeping dreaming respiring talking excreting handling eye lids batting and closing and all acts done by the organs he is totally unconcerned and just enjoys actions as a non entity verse number 54 that which cannot be seen or described in words that supreme state and bliss and most effulgent on that ancient that brahma is and beyond to a jnani all the time having got rid of the bondage he wanders happily and freely verse number 55 the realized jnani becomes a torch bearer to the society he and grosses in brahma and his mind will become when one with atma and enjoys the universe without desires ambitions and without work he radiates brilliantly all the time verse number 56 the jnani by virtue of the excellent benevolence of his own perceptor possessing firm knowledge of oneness totally and he leads all duality he deserts the body all the time and rules the earth with his radiance he is in the form of brahma the brahma swarupa verse number 57 the person who knows brahma becomes brahma the only real and all the world is unreal the jiva is also brahma and is non dual verse number 58 as long as the jnani possesses his body he lives to experience of past vasanas and when they are experienced and annihilated he will be detached from the bondage of mortal body and becomes the immortal bliss brahma without sadeshcha and videcha that is good and bad vasanas verse number 59 there is no other object other than brahma he is supreme bliss he is un incomparable imperishable second to none ananda thus truth is knowledge bliss and existence the pot is occupied by space and space is occupied in the pot and when the pot is broken the space inside the pot and outside the pot becomes one thus the whole universe regardless of objects is pervaded with consciousness verse number 60 brahma is most subtle the eye is nothing but the perceiver brahma he pervades in all objects including trees all experiences shapes or colors ignorance or knowledge desire or hatred anger or pleasure all is brahma he is the same in creation sustenance or dissolution verse number 61 the everlasting bliss which has no birth death near and far pervading all places most fertile the means to cross the ocean of life is oneness the supreme fearless and divine of all gunas 
this is the truth reality and dharma the one without a second verse number 62 here sada shiva brahmendra has stated in 62 shlokas by the grace of his guru the essence of vedanta verse number 63 who ever recites the satma vidya vilasam and contemplates the purport will emerge with the will merge with brahma jnana he will attain and become perfection and liberation verse number 64 this book of atam vidya vilasam is written by sri sada shiva brahmendra addressing brahma who is none else is guru param shivendra shiva so i conclude this video thank you for watching this video please like comment and share the video subscribe the channel namaskar my dear friend thank you